Cześć, siemanko. Today is November 11th, a very special day here in Poland, as it's actually our Independence Day. And in the spirit of gaining a little freedom, I thought why not show you guys how to get some independence from Meta on your quest. So, what is up everyone? I'm Mystical, and today I'm going to be showing you some of my favorite unofficial apps that you can get on your quest to level up your game. So, as usual, chapters are down below, and let's begin. And don't worry, in case you're rocking an older headset, or just one that I'm not using in this video, this actually works across the MetaQuest 3, 3S, 2, 1, and even the Quest Pro. As in case you didn't know, all of these are running Android. Now, they are running different versions of Android, so depending on which application you want to install, you might need to get an older or newer version. Just before we jump into me actually showing you the apps, you will require developer mode enabled on your Quest. It's really simple to enable, it's also entirely free, and it will allow you to do a whole ton more. So I highly recommend you get that done in case you haven't done so already. I'll link a few videos on how to do it down below, as well as uh, one right up here. And that brings us perfectly into our two most essential apps, if you ask me. The first one up is SideQuest. In case you're not aware, there is an alternative app store for your Quest, and you can actually install it on the device itself. It's called SideQuest, it's existed for a while now, and it has thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of applications that you can get on your Quest that are not available in the Meta Store. And a little bit of a history lesson, this is actually where Gorilla Tech started. It's the safest and easiest way to browse a massive library of unofficial apps right there on your device, without having to look for them on some shady sites. So now, with developer mode enabled, you'll want to install SideQuest onto your Quest. This is super simple, you just access their website, connecting your Quest to your computer, and accept any ADB debugging prompts that may appear. On their website, it should now appear inside the little dialog box. Once it does and you have everything confirmed, you can just hit install and their web-based application will do everything for you. It's gotten this simple throughout the years. However, for our second application, it won't be that easy. As I highly recommend, you get yourself F-Droid. F-Droid is another alternative app store, however, it's not just for virtual reality. It's actually an open source app store for Android, and it houses a ton of applications that are actually going to be on our list later on, so installing this now will make your life a lot easier later, not having to deal with APKs and things like that. To install F-Droid, you will require some form of Android debugging bridge, whether it's ADB on your computer, which is really simple to install, or Bug Jaeger on your phone, which will allow you to run the ADB bridge from your phone to your Quest. Now once you have the Android debugging bridge, you're going to want to find and download the F-Droid APK. Then from there, open up a terminal on your computer or the Bug Jaeger app, connect your Quest to your computer or your phone, accept any ADB prompts that may appear, and once a connection has been established on your computer, you'll want to type ADB space install space and then drag the F-Droid APK into your terminal and press enter, and that will install the F-Droid application onto your Quest. On Bug Jaeger, it's a lot easier. Connect your phone to your Quest using a Type-C to Type-C cable, press on this little icon right here, and then from there find the F-Droid APK and just install it. Now you will have access to a ton of 2D applications that are open source entirely there on your Quest. And that brings us right along to our next app, a good file manager. And this could be anything, I know you guys have your own opinions about this, and your own favorite file managers, so do let me know which one you choose down below, but I personally tend to recommend Amaze, simply because it's open source, and you know, that usually means they have nothing to hide. That, and I quite enjoy the material design. So now with F-Droid on your quest, this is going to be a really simple install. All you do is you launch F-Droid, find Amaze file manager, and hit install. It might ask you whether you want to allow to install unknown sources apps, you'll need to tick this to allow it to do so, then go back and press install again. Once a Maze file manager is installed on your Quest, you'll be able to access folders just as you would be able to on a computer. Very handy in case you want to do file management right there on your Quest, since not all file extensions are supported inside the default file manager, and you also can't install APK files from the default file manager. This opens up the floodgates for a whole ton of new applications. But now that your unofficial apps are piling up, you may be wondering, how on earth are we going to browse through these? Of course, they do not appear on the home page of the Quest, and if you want to find them, you have to go to unknown sources to the left in filters. Very annoying, and they don't even show up with icons. 
So you may want to get yourself a third party launcher. And yes, this does actually exist for our Quest devices. So now we're going to fire up the Quest's web browser and search for Lightning Launcher. The first page over here on GitHub, as this is also open source, will be the one we want to launch. Then head over to releases and download the APK. That APK will now appear inside a Maze file manager once it's done downloading. And all we have to do is head over to downloads and press on Lightning Launcher. Now we can install the app directly from a maze, making our lives a lot easier. Launching Lightning Launcher, you can see it has tabs up top for categories and shows all your unofficial apps in a nice clean manner with icons and everything. So if you want to launch anything in the future, it's as simple as launching Lightning Launcher and not having to look through all the other apps that you have on Quest. That and there's a bunch of different customizations here as well in case you want to make your headset feel truly yours. Now onto some media power-ups. As a lot of you may know, there are a bunch of third-party applications for Quest in case you want to use some media services like Disney Plus and others that are not yet available officially on Quest. Or you can launch them in the web browser, but that's not the ideal way of doing this. As a lot of you have already been doing, you can actually install the official Android APKs from these apps onto your Quest. It's as simple as finding an application for a media service that you want, for example Plex, inside your Quest web browser, downloading it through something like APK Mirror, since that's one that is uh, known and trusted, then going back into a Maze file manager and pressing install. I have to stop him here, as there is also one more very important thing I need to mention, and that is a lot of apps on APK Mirror nowadays require an app bundle installer. Very simple though, all you need to do is download APK Mirror installer right off of APK Mirror and then install it through a maze. Then by launching APK Mirror installer, you'll be able to install these app bundles. Without it, they'll be .apkm files instead of .apk files and the Android file system will not know what to do with them. It's annoying, I know but at least there's a way around it. Which is exactly what you're going to get to see here with the uh, Plex app. It's a .apkm file, which means I couldn't just install it through a maze like I assumed I'd be able to when recording this video. Boom, now you have the official Plex app right there on your Quest that you can launch as its own separate window and you don't have to go through the web browser every time. Same goes for Jellyfin and uh, any of the other apps that you may want to install, they're not yet officially supported. Now, moving on to something for gamers, as there is actually quite a lot of really good information here. For example, emulators, and we did try this in a previous video, the one I'm specifically going to talk about right now, it's called GameHub. Now, don't jump into it right away, there are a few major red flags, and a lot of people have been recommending GameHub Lite in case you want to bypass those red flags. The biggest one, of course, being the fact that you need to sign into your Steam account. And uh, we don't know where that's going, probably some Chinese offshore servers. But GameHub Lite apparently strips this and is open source, so that is one that you could potentially look into. Those are PC emulators, as yes, you can run PC games right there on your Quest. What is recommended though is RetroArch, as yes, you can actually emulate old titles through RetroArch on the Quest just as you would on, say, a Raspberry Pi. Download the RetroArch APK through your Quest internet browser, install it through a maze, and then uh, rip your games and put them into the ROMs folder. Boom, you now have access to a massive library of retro games. Or not that retro, in case uh, you're playing any of the newer titles that RetroArch supports. Best part about this is the fact that you can actually connect a Bluetooth game controller right there to your Quest in Bluetooth settings, making the gameplay experience quite a bit better than if you were to use the touch controls that appear by default. It supports controllers from Xbox to uh, PlayStation 5, I'm pretty sure it supports PS4 as well, and basically any of the other generic controllers that you can find. And in case you guys want to add to the gaming, there's also the flat 2D Steam Link APK. Yes, I know, the official Steam VR Link app is out, and you can theoretically use that to play 2D apps, but you have to connect through Steam VR, which is super annoying if you ask me. Sometimes I don't want Steam VR to launch on my PC, take up those extra resources, and I actually just want to see my 2D flat desktop, kind of like we would through Xbox Cloud Gaming. And that is possible if you install the Steam Link APK. That will give you access to the normal Android 
Steam Link app. Now let's move on to some power tools. And this is one of my favorite sections, as you can actually get Activity Launcher from F-Droid and unlock a bunch of new settings. Do be careful with this one, as changing some of them may bug out your quest. I haven't had any issues with the thing bricking yet, but I have led to some interesting experiences. Through Activity Launcher, you can actually gain access to the official Android settings. Yes, after all, this is an Android device. All you do is you launch Activity Launcher, once you install it through F-Droid, and search for settings. Then you launch the main settings activity, and boom, all of a sudden you're looking at the standard Android settings app. And yes, this does also allow you to enable developer options and tick OEM unlocking. Now, um, don't play with that one. We don't entirely know what it does yet. Probably nothing, but you don't want to risk actually bricking your device through OEM unlocking it with unofficial means. But it is theoretically there, so um, yeah, just a word of warning, don't actually use it. Another one for you power users out there that I feel the need to mention is Quest Games Optimizer. And this is one that a ton of you in the comment section have been using. It allows you to change the power settings of your Quest dependent on application and also create profiles for separate apps. Really cool in case you guys are power users and want to have different CPU and GPU levels set up dependent on which app you're playing. As of course, the Quest does have different levels of CPU and GPU that you can set and that changes the power output of the device. So the higher you set it, the more power you're going to get. That and it also has a bunch of other settings that we might look into in a dedicated video. As well as that, there's also Termux. For some of you more advanced users out there, I've used Termux in the past to install Linux environments on the Quest. So that might be a cool video we revisit in the future, but this is essentially just a terminal emulator. I won't go too far into this because I don't want users that shouldn't be using it using it. You can't do too much without root access anyway, but yeah, it's a terminal on your Quest that you can use to install Linux distros. Uh, you can even use it to launch a Minecraft server in case that's something you want to do on your Quest. Now onto possibly one of the most popular side loaded applications, right alongside things like Spotify before they actually became available. Available, and that is Discord. Yes, I know Discord is coming to Quest in 2026. However, it's not there yet. And that's a problem because a lot of people want to be talking to their friends through Quest while playing games or when just, you know, browsing 2D windows. And yes, you can actually do that. You can install the Discord APK onto your device. And of course, this is going to be as simple as downloading the APK through something like APK Mirror in your Quest browser and installing it through a maze. I believe you get the drift at this point. This will give you access to the entire Discord app that you would normally have on something like your phone on your Quest. Now, something I feel the need to mention here in case you guys are on an older firmware, on older firmwares, it was also possible to install custom homes through SideQuest or through custom APKs. Now, I'm unable to show this to you here and now, but I do feel the need to mention it. Why am I unable to show it to you? Well, that is because Quest's immersive homes came out. And since those came out, it's been pretty much impossible to uh, actually install custom homes on the Quest. However, in case you are on an older firmware, feel free to look around and you might actually find those APKs floating around somewhere. Get yourself some cool custom homes. So there you have it. With just a few unofficial apps, you can unleash your Quest's much larger potential. And this isn't the end of it. These are just some of my favorites. I'm sure you guys have more to add to that list, so do feel free to let us know down below. And in case anyone mentions something super exciting, I'll make sure to pin that comment. It's a shame that Meta doesn't allow this by default and locks it behind a developer account, but at least they give us the ability to enable that developer account without too many issues. That's going to be it for today's video. If you guys like this one, please do give it a like. If you disliked it, I guess this button works too, but let me know why down below. If you're not yet part of our community, check out our Discord and our Reddit down below where I want to see you posting your spicy memes. And thank you so, so much to all the Patreons supporting this channel. You guys are amazing. Seriously, much love. You are what makes this content possible and I appreciate you. And thank you to anyone else supporting the channel in any way, shape or form. And as usual, if you want to be notified of content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack the subscribe button with your my bell and see next video. Peace. Niestety, czekanie zbyt długo w TWRP spowodowało, że Amazon Echo się zbrikowało. Więc e, będziemy musieli użyć metody kontrolowanego zwarcia na dwóch pinach. E, pozwoliłem już sobie ściągnąć dno. Teraz mamy dostęp do płyty głównej. 